This is a Fiat 126. In fact, it's my very own Fiat 126. And in this video, I'm gonna show you around it. I'm gonna explain why I bought it and how much I paid for it and tell you the reasons why I think this is one of the coolest cars in the world. The Fiat 126 was built in Italy between 1972 and 1973, but it was also built under license in Poland from 1973 until 2000. And in Italy, they made about 1 million of these things, but in Poland, they built 3.3 million. It was seen as modern compared to the other things you could get in Poland at the time. To actually buy one of these, you needed approval from the government, and then you'd have to wait for about two years because the waiting list was so long, and that meant that people, as soon as they bought their cars, they'd often sell them the next day at twice the price. Now, this particular car is actually one of the Polish 126s, and you can tell it apart from the Italian one because it has Polski Fiat on the badge on the front, and 126p on the badge on the back. It also has a slightly higher ride height and orange indicator repeaters on the doors. Underneath the skin, the Fiat 126 is pretty much identical mechanically to the 500 that it replaced. I mean, it's super, super simple, dead easy to work on. And the spring for the front suspension is just a metal bar that connects the two wheels. It's just insane how basic this thing is compared to modern cars. It's, it's the complete polar opposite. Another thing that's interesting is that it's got all round drum brakes, but they did improve them in 1980 to make them a little bit stronger. Another safety feature added in 1980 were some hazard warning lights. Yes, <laughs> huge safety gains there, I must say. Now, this car has the chrome bumpers, which are most sought after, yeah. You can get one with black plastic bumpers, which was introduced in 1984, but really, it just does not look as good. Welcome to the inside of the Polsky Fiat, and yes, luxurious, it certainly is not. Now, I will give it this, it has soft touch material on the dash, like you don't actually get in quite a few modern cars, but the rest of it is very, very basic and very, very Spartan. You've got exposed metal under here and screw heads that you can catch your body on and you cut yourself. The steering wheel is made out of the cheapest plastic I have ever felt and it's got just two spokes. Then you've just got a single speedometer. It does have an odometer on it which says 52,000 kilometers, though that could be 152,000 or 252,000. I have no way of knowing. Then there's a fuel gauge which we'll get back to. You've got banker switches there for the lights, the rear heated screen and those all important hazard warning lights. Woohoo! Then there's this button here, which I'll talk more about in a bit. And here we have the original stereo for the car, which is just tuned into Poland, I think. And you have a single speaker down there that it plays through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's about all it receives. <laughs> it's a bit of a shame because you do want the stereo to work because this car is so noisy, but it has no soundproofing. I mean, look at the headliner. It's just a bit of carpet up there. It's really, really basic. Now, one of the main reasons I wanted this car was for its engine because it's rear mounted and it's air cooled and I couldn't afford an air cooled Porsche. So yeah, this was the only alternative I could think of. So the car started off with a 600cc two cylinder air cooled unit, which is what this has. Yeah, it has 23 horsepower and 43 Newton meters of torque. But yeah, funny little engine that makes a funny little noise and doesn't deliver much power. The 126 may be a small car, but it does have a modicum of practicality. So there's some very thin door bins. Yeah, it wouldn't fit a bottle in there though. And a little place there, which seems perfect for a mobile phone. Can't believe they thought about that back in 1972. Also, you can slide the front seats forwards and backwards. I swear you can put them backwards as well. <laughs> yeah, you can. And you can recline them almost low enough you can lie down and have a sleep in this car, which probably would be handy when it breaks down and you need to wait for someone to come and rescue you. Right, let's have a look underneath the bonnet of the 126. So yes, you have a front boot with an okay amount of space. So in here I've got some spares, some paint for touching up. There's a jerry can. I'll explain more about that in a bit. There's a warning triangle in here. We've also got a spare wheel, a full size spare wheel, but that's because the wheels are very small. You've got your battery down there, which isn't a very good battery. The capacity is quite small on it. And when you combine that with an alternator that really doesn't charge very well, quite often you come to this thing and yeah, it needs bump starting. There's some other funny things about it. For instance, the covers for the lights, which are supposed to protect the back of them, keep falling off. And then there's the wiring, which is just underneath this mat. And it's an absolute mess. 
as you can see, there is not a lot of room here in the back of a Fiat 126. Yet this was used as a main family car for the Polish. So they go off on long driving holidays in these things, fully packed, fully loaded with the family in it. And they often have suitcases piled up on the roof as well. Completely crazy. Interesting thing is that the people in the back of the car can actually control the car's heating because there's a little switch there which you move around to alter the amount of airflow going from the engine into the car's cabin. It takes a long time to get hot though, I can tell you. There are a few funny features on this 126 that you do have to get used to. So if you want to use the parking lights, you press this switch forward and then you'll have the lights on without the keys in the ignition. However, when you're driving and you want the lights on, you have to press it down that way and then you have the side lights on and then you use this stalk to go into normal beam and then press it again to go into high beam. Something else that's funny is the indicators. So when you put the indicator on, you get a flash up there in the speedo but then it kind of disappears and you don't see it again. And you're not sure if your indicators are working and that happens in both directions. It's a little bit frustrating, but totally common on this car. Then there's this little button up here, which is for the windscreen washer. It's not connected to a motor, it's connected to a hand operated bump. So you just press it and it squirts the water at the windscreen and then you use this lever to operate the windscreen wipers and they're not very good as you can see. You can put it onto intermittent wipe and then you change the speed of the intermittent wipe using this little dial here. This isn't actually the original dial. What happened is someone broke into this car and the only thing they stole was the little knob off there. Bizarre. However, I've got a replacement. That's what it should look like. Though I had to buy it with the whole assembly, which is annoying. Another thing that's annoying about this car is the fact that it absolutely loves to rust. I mean, you give it half a chance and leave it out in the wet and it will transform itself into a pile of iron oxide dust. Now you have to fill it with rust proofing material, basically a load of special tarry goop, which just stops the water getting through to the metal. It's it here on the sill. That's actually leaked out of the doors and it ends up on your clothes, but it's the only way to stop this car just disintegrating. Another thing that gets on my nerves is this, the heater ventilation system, because I'm not entirely sure how it works. So this knob that you pull in and out, I think distributes the air either out of these vents here or out up against the windscreen. And then there's one that has like a blue circle on it, which I'm guessing is for cold air out of the front when you're driving along. But I'm not entirely sure because it doesn't seem to do anything. Another thing that I find super frustrating about this car is that random bits of it just drop off, especially the window winders whenever you shut the door. So I'll demonstrate now. Finally then, let's take this silly little Fiat for a drive. Now you don't turn it on using the key. Instead you pull levers down by the handbrake. So the one on the left is for the choke, so you put that on when you're cold starting. Then you pull up on the other one to engage the starter motor. And the car, yes, should rattle into life. Okay, I just turn that back, the choke doesn't need to be on that much. Right, let's drive it. Yay! <laughs> so this car has a straight cut first gear, so you do notice it whine like that. <laughs> also, there's no synchromesh on first, but all other four gears do have synchromeshes, unlike on the old Fiat 500, which you had to double declutch, otherwise you'd end up grinding the gears together. So yeah, this is a noisy little car, as you can probably tell, and it's quite bouncy. Though in some ways, it means it can deal with potholes quite well. You just fly over them because it's so light. This thing only weighs 600 kilos. The brakes are interesting, so they do nothing, and then they suddenly lock up. <laughs> so you've got to be careful not to skid. No ABS here, folks, no ABS or safety systems at all. The steering, there's no power assistance to it. So when you're maneuvering out of junctions, it can feel a little bit heavier than you might be used to, but once you're driving, no problem at all. And here's one of my favorite things about this car is that it's so narrow, just 1.3 meters, you can basically fit through the gap of those smaller speed humps, like now. Yay, I don't have to slow down. It's sometimes hard to tell what speed you are doing because the speedo is in kilometers an hour. Though there's some little red dots which actually show you when you're supposed to change up a gear, but they correspond pretty much to miles an hour. So we've got 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, and one for 50, which is about this car's top speed 
And believe me, it feels 100 miles an hour because it's just so flimsy. Another thing I like about this car is the turning circle. It is awesome. You can just turn this thing on a penny. Look at that, mini roundabouts and no problem at all. I love that about it. <laughs> the other thing I love is that people just stop and stare at this thing because it's so unusual and so very, very cute. Also, the Polish lorry drivers will honk their horns in respect to this little car because they recognize it. Actually, in Poland, it was nicknamed Malu, which means little one. And eventually that became its official name because everyone just called it that. Look at this, round corners. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like a little go-kart. And it feels so pure, you know, driving today feels nothing like this. You really do feel like you're controlling a mechanical thing. It is super fun. And another great thing about it is it's so easy to park. I mean, you can just park it dead simple anywhere. There's always a space for it because it's only three meters long. In fact, look at this, here's a little parking space here. This would normally be hard. In fact, I'll do a UE so you can see it. Yep, well, yep, almost got caught out by those guys. You do not want to get crashed into in this car because you are toast. Right, look at this. Oh, up the curb, doesn't matter. Right, see this parking space here? Yeah, it's not very big, but it's big enough for a Fiat 126. And because it's left-hand drive this car, it's super easy for me to see where the curb is. It doesn't really matter if you make a hash of things because even if you're at a wonky angle, the car's so narrow that it just doesn't stick out. And of course you can see right at the back window. That was impressive parking. Look at that. I can't believe I fit in that gap. That's insanely good. Right, let's get out of here. Super easy. <laughs> now, one of the things that's a bit weird about this car is the fuel gauge. So it reads opposite. So when it says it's empty, it's actually full. And when it's full, it's empty. And there's no in between. Now to fill up, costs a little over 10 quid. It's got such a small tank. I don't know what the economy is. I've never measured it, but it's probably quite cheap. There is one problem with this car though. The emissions aren't great though. As a result, this car is not exempt from the ultra low emission zone charge and that's extending out to Greater London which will include where I live which means if you want to drive this car it's going to cost £12 a day which is about the same it costs to fill up with fuel which is just bonkers. Anyway, so other than that this car is super cheap. You know it cost me 200 quid a year in insurance, it cost me about 200 quid in tax, to buy it, it was 1,500 quid, and actually a Polish friend found it for me, and then he spent another 1,000 pounds having it done up by a specialist. So the paintwork was all done, any rust was removed, the brakes were sorted out, it was given a full service, new tires put on it. So that took the price to 2,500 pounds. Then I was gonna drive it all the way back from Poland to England, which would have been a nightmare in this little thing, at 50 miles an hour and the noise and the lack of comfort, horrendous. Unfortunately, my mate managed to find someone who was willing to put it on the back of a trailer and bring it from Poland to my house for just 200 quid, which was a bargain. And I think overall, this car is a bit of a bargain. It's so unique, so quirky. Everyone that looks at it seems to love it. It makes people smile and it makes me smile as well. Even the horn, it's just silly. I hope you enjoyed this video on my Fiat 126. And if you'd like to see more on it, let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the comments below. Also, let me know if you'd like me to do a video on my supercharged Mazda MX-5 or my Porsche 911 996. If you want to watch some more videos right now, just click over there. And please subscribe to this channel by clicking on my face. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when I make a new upload.